Hi, welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome back if you're a subscriber. Today I am coming to you with a recommendations video based on the Halloween weekend readathon prompts. So if you don't already know, I am co-hosting a Halloween themed readathon all of October and it takes place from every Thursday through Sunday in the month. And I'm co-hosting this with Lexi from Books with Lexi, Michelle from Michelle's Library, Katrina from Katrina Brown, and Erin from Erin Megan. And I am so excited about this readathon. It's actually already started because we wanted to start it on the Thursday leading up until the first weekend in October, which oh my gosh, when you're watching this video, happy first day of October. I cannot believe it is already October. I've already done a video like this for Stabathon, which is another readathon I am co-hosting. And if you want some more Halloween themed recommendations, I would check out that video. There will be a little bit of overlap in this, but I have different books in here to talk about too. And I am so excited for Halloween and this time of year. And I hope you check out that other video because I do have some recommendations in there that I don't talk about in this video. So without further ado, I want to read out the prompts for you really quick. So we have an Instagram called Hallow Weekend Readathon. I will link everything in the bio and we have graphics saved and everything. So if you go to the story, you can see all of it. But the main prompts are read a host favorite, read a book with a Halloween word in the title, read your favorite subgenre, Halloween vibes, and genre blend. And for the bonus prompts, it is read a novella, read an author you love, a new author, Halloween colors on the cover, and a cover you love. So I'll be going through all those prompts today and let's just get into the video. Also, I wanted to mention that we did have merch. Look how cute this is. It's a little ghost reading. Lexi did such a good job with this merch. I'm trying to get it to focus on this little ghost, but it's so adorable. I'm obsessed. Love it so much. And I also matched my makeup today to kind of match my shirt. So I'm loving the outfit. So for reading a host favorite, I recommend watching everybody's video. I'll link them below, but I wanted quickly to share the ones that I recommended. So the first one I want to show you all is The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. And this one is such a fun little book. It's very fast. It's a YA read. And basically this is about two best friends who decide to take a trip and go into the woods, go hiking in this isolated setting, and things go very, very wrong. My next recommendation was Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge. This one takes place in the 60s and it is about a town where teenage boys every year stay in their room in the days leading up to Halloween with no food, and then they participate in this competition. So this creature called the October Boy comes out every year, and their goal is to kill him. And if they kill him, they win and they can escape the town. Then I want to recommend Cirque Berserk by Jessica Guess. This one is a perfect slasher. It has retro 80s vibes and it takes place in a theme park. And then of course, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I talk so much about this book, but basically what it's about is in the title. It's about a group of women in the 90s who form a book club and a new mysterious member seems like he may be a vampire. And then my last recommendation is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This is one of my favorite books of all time. It's so, so good. I highly recommend it. It's about the main character who inherits her parents' house. And when she was a child, they fled from the house and her father wrote a best-selling novel based on the paranormal experiences in the house. And I also wanna say, look at this copy and look at the edges. Aren't they stunning? So pretty. For this one, I'm interested in a few of the host recommendations personally. So The Haunting of Lee Harker by Darcy Coates was recommended by Erin. So this one is about a woman who has lived in her house for years and has never experienced anything weird. It's always been her sanctuary, but one day weird things start to happen and it seems like it might be haunted. Erin also recommended Slewfoot and this one looks so good. I, first of all, am obsessed of the cover. It's basically artwork. And this one I've heard very, very, very good things about. And this is the perfect time of year to read it. So I really hope I get to this one. But this one is basically about a woman who lives in this puritanical society and her husband passes away under suspicious circumstances. And a powerful spirit named Slewfoot is awakened and villagers start to die. And they suspect that she is a witch. 
And then the last host rack that I'm very interested in is Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. And this was recommended by Michelle. And I have been wanting to read this book for so long. I've heard such good things about it. This one is also on Kindle Unlimited, which is amazing because I have Kindle Unlimited, so it will be free for me if I decide to pick it up. Also, I've heard from multiple people that this has a lot of triggers in it, so be warned, maybe check those out if you're sensitive to certain things. And it is a darker thriller, which really makes me intrigued because I generally really enjoy dark thrillers. So based on Michelle's description, this is about a woman who is being released from prison and you're kind of put back in time and see the events that led to her being in prison and now you follow her in present day. I didn't really want to read any more about the description because I kind of want to go into this one a little more blind. I really like doing that with books when I can and I decided, you know what, that's all I need to know. Whenever I read it, I'm just going to mostly go in blind and see what it has to offer. I feel like sometimes when I read descriptions of books, it gives away too much and then my experience reading it is not as exciting. So like I said, I kind of like to take advantage of the times where I can go into books a little bit more blind. So the next prompt is read a book with a Halloween related word in the title. So this could be blood, dead, night, haunt, shadow, fear, and so many more words that you can relate to Halloween. So my first recommendation for this one is, drum roll, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And this one is such a fun time. It uses mixed media, which makes it such a fast ride. And I feel like this book is very, very hyped up for a very good reason. So this is about a senior in high school and her name's Pippa, and she has to complete a class project. So she decides to do some research on a case that happened five years in the past. Andy Bell was murdered and Saul was accused of murdering her and he's been in jail ever since. But Andy suspects that maybe he's not responsible for the murder. And as Pippa keeps uncovering more and more secrets, she realizes that the murderer is still out there and she has become a target. A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson would be perfect for this one. The writing in this is stunning and lyrical and I just feel like this is a wonderful book to read around this time of year. This is told from the perspective of one of Dracula's brides and she is writing a letter to Dracula. This is a sapphic book and it also has a lot of commentary on abusive relationships and like I said before the writing is just stunning. It is extremely poetic, some of the most beautiful writing that I've ever heard and also I would highly recommend the audiobook for this one. Also Home Before Dark would be perfect for this. And then also a book called Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez came out a few years ago and its sequel Halloween Slaughter is actually coming out during this month which is really exciting because it actually has the word Halloween in the title, so I would really love to read this one. The original one though, Camp Slaughter, is about a group of college students who decide to rent a cabin in the isolated woods, but basically a cannibal is stalking them and starts coming for them. It's a really fun time, it's very gory, and is such a fun read. I wanted to suggest Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. This one I didn't personally love a ton, but I did want to recommend it because it does have the word dead in the title. And this is basically a sci-fi horror book, but I would say it reads a lot more like a sci-fi thriller book. So this is very much inspired by the Titanic, but make it space. So this is about a crew who are in space and they discover this legendary lost luxury spacecraft. And they decide to go on board and explore and try to solve the mystery of what actually happened there. But once they enter, they start to suspect that it's haunted. Another recommendation with a Halloween type of word in the title is Kill Creek. This one would be a perfect read to read around this time of year, and this is by Scott Thomas. Also, I really, really like this copy. Look at the edges here. Stunning. This for a while was really hard to get your hands on. I don't know if it's still difficult to get your hands on, but I remember I had to buy this actually through someone outside of the bookstores because they were all sold out. But this is actually about a group of authors and they are the world's most famous horror authors and they are invited for this publicity stunt to go on Halloween and spend a night actually in this notorious haunted house. And so they all decide to go, but once they leave, it seems like something might be following them. There were some very genuinely scary scenes in this. The ending goes off the rails. I will say I didn't love certain aspects aspects of how the author wrote in this book, but I still want to recommend it because I did enjoy the majority of it. So I personally haven't read this one, but I feel like it would be a perfect read for this prompt, and it is The October Boys by Adam Millard. 
I've heard this one compared to Stephen King's It because it is following something that happened to a group of children in the past and now following them as adults as well and they're kind of dealing and struggling with what happened and it's now affecting them in the future. So this is about four boys and they go trick-or-treating in 1988 and one of them is actually taken by the ice cream man. So now it's 2016 and the ice cream man is back for revenge and they are all haunted by what happened in the past. So like I said, it sounds very it-like, but it's much, much shorter and I'm very intrigued by this one. I really have been wanting to pick it up for a while and who knows if I'll get to it this year, but I definitely wanted to include it in this video. So another perfect book for this would be Halloween Fiend. This has a really, really cool cover. I am obsessed with this cover. This one says, Strang isn't the small quaint town it appears to be. It's haunted every night by a creature the townsfolk refer to as Halloween. Once the sun sets every day, Halloween emerges to collect its treats, a small live offering from each household. The residents comply because no one wants to be the target of Halloween's tricks. But the nightmare of residing in Strang is nothing compared to the yearly ritual Halloween demands of the citizens on All Hallows' Eve. So I think I'll be reading this one this year for this prompt. And then of course for this prompt, there are so many different Halloween short story collections. I want to share a few that are on my radar. This is not even scratching the surface of how many Halloween short story collections there are. So a short story collection that I highly, highly recommend is Autumn Crow by Cameron Chaney. I really want to reread some of the stories in this. There are some excellent stories in this collection. And this is basically about a town where every day is Halloween. One of these stories literally made me tear up. It is so emotional and sweet. And other stories in here are genuinely creepy. So I would highly recommend this one. I also know that this is the buddy read for Ashley's 24 hour horror-a-thon. So it would be perfect to read for this prompt and for her horror-a-thon. Other short story collections that are on my radar are Dead Leaves by Kaylin Patrick Burke, The Halloween Store and Other Tales of All Hallows Eve by Ronald Kelly, Halloween Season by Lucy A. Cinder, and This is Halloween by James A. Moore. The next prompt is read a horror or thriller book in your favorite subgenre. So I have a ton of favorite subgenres. I'm gonna talk about a few here. And first I'm gonna start with isolated settings. So for this subgenre, I'm gonna recommend Stolen Tongues by Felix Blackwell. And this is genuinely one of the scariest books, if not the scariest book that I've ever read. It didn't scare me fully throughout the whole novel, but oh my gosh, there's some scenes in here that are genuinely terrifying and I will never forget. And this definitely has a home invasion vibe, which I really like home invasion in horror movies. And this is one of the only like home invasion books I've read. That aspect isn't the whole time, but it has that feel. And basically it's about a couple who are going away on this romantic romantic vacation up on this snowy mountain and it's the perfect setting, right? <laughs> I say that because I'm always thinking like what could go wrong in an isolated setting where you have no contact with the outside world? What could go wrong? But basically while they're there in the night they start hearing strange sounds and things just get more and more terrifying. I really enjoy books in the slasher subgenre. So this is a thriller with slasher elements and it is Final Girls by Riley Sager. This is his first book and I feel like it's glossed over a lot. I think this is a really fun read. I know that it's not necessarily his best work according to a lot of people, but I still really had a great time reading this. So this is about Quincy and she has been named a final girl by the media and two other final girls have been really relevant in her time as a final girl. One of them turns up dead though and the other one turns up on her doorstep and so her life changes obviously and she thinks she's a target and you also are getting flashbacks to when she took a vacation to a cabin where a massacre occurred and that situation made her a final girl and so I loved the flashback chapters and this one was a really really fast-paced book so I would highly recommend it. I would also recommend Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez like I said before. So for Gothic which is another fun subgenre for me. I would recommend Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I talk about this book all the time because it's so, so fabulous. The atmosphere and the setting in this is wonderful and it's a really amazing horror book. 
So this one is very slow burn and it takes place in 1950s Mexico. This is about Noemi and she receives a letter from her cousin and her cousin is newly married. She's living in this mansion with her new husband and it seems like there's something going on with her cousin. So she wants to check in on her and so she decides to take a trip and live in the house. And as soon as she gets in the house, something is very, very wrong. Not only with the people there, but also just with the house, it seems very haunted. This one is great. It has, like I said, a slow build, but it really does pay off and the twist is pretty out there, but I enjoyed it. I will mention there is also body horror in this one that just made me like, Ooh. It made me cringe, but it was really good. Another book with gothic atmosphere, like I said before, is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. And then a book I want to recommend that I just recently read for my book club, The Lights Out Book Club, is Gallows Hill by Darcy Coates. And this is my first Darcy book, but I can't wait to read more. So this is about Margot and her parents have recently passed away. And so she inherits their old gothic house and they also ran a whole winery. So she goes there to check out the house and the family business to to see if she wants to keep the business up. But while she's staying there, it becomes clear that something very supernatural is going on and that the house is haunted. I will say that this one gave me sort of Home Before Dark vibes if Home Before Dark wasn't also a thriller. And I really enjoyed this one. I loved the reveal at the end. It was very chilling. I know that Darcy Coates is definitely considered a comfort horror author, but I did think that there was some disturbing imagery in this one. So maybe this one is a little bit darker than her other work, but I would highly recommend it. So the next prompt is read a book that's set around Halloween or gives you Halloween vibes. So again, I would say Dark Harvest would be perfect for this one, as well as Halloween Slaughter, Autumn Crow, like I said before. And then I want to recommend a new book that I haven't talked about yet, and it is Halloween Party by R.L. Stein. And this is a tiny little book. It's only 147 pages and it's a tiny one. And this one is a fun, cheesy time. If you just want a quick read that you can fly through that gives you nostalgic vibes, I would recommend this one. This is a Fear Street book, and this is about a group of teens who receive a really fancy formal invitation to this Halloween party. And they all go, but things go horribly wrong. Someone's lying on the floor with a knife in their back and the power goes out and it seems like someone is there to pick them off one by one. And then the book personally I want to read for this one is Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar. And I've been hearing a ton about this book lately. This one is a YA slasher, but I've heard that it does not hold back on the gore and feels a little bit more like an adult book. All I know about this one is it takes place in a tiny Midwestern town and someone is dressing up like a clown and murdering people. So the next prompt is read a genre blend book. So I have a few recommendations for this one. So what I am personally reading is Runtime by Katherine Ryan Howard. And I've had my eyes on this as soon as it came out. It looked so, so, so good. This is about Adele and she used to be an actress on this really famous soap opera, but she hasn't had much luck in acting lately. And she's now offered a project to film this horror movie in this remote woods. And basically the actor that they had booked for this gig fell through and so she decides to take up this opportunity. But things start turning scary not only in the movie but more so in real life. So this has the isolated setting trope. I love the whole movie within a book idea and I just started it but I'm really enjoying it. I'm reading it on audiobook and I think it has a really really strong start. There are different narrators in this book so I feel like I would recommend this to read through audiobook. So I know I keep mentioning Home Before Dark, but I will say that this is a perfect thriller horror genre blend book. Also, like I said before, Dead Silence works perfectly as a thriller sci-fi book. So those are my main recs for that prompt. Also, the Mindfuck series counts as a thriller romance book. It's more of a dark romance book, but this one is about S.T. Abby, and it is about this female serial killer who falls in love with the FBI agent who is on her case. So I would recommend that as well. Let's move on to the bonus prompts. So for the first bonus prompt, it is read a book with Halloween colors on the cover. Wow, that is 
is a tongue twister to say. So what I wanted to recommend for this one is A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. And this book genuinely scared me when I read it a couple years ago. So this is about Marjorie who begins to display signs of schizophrenia and so her family brings her to so many doctors and specialists but nothing's helping and so they end up approaching a priest and basically he believes she's possessed and he wants to perform an exorcism. But medical bills are piling up and the family is really desperate for money so when a film production crew kind of approaches them and asks if they can film this they accept. So in the present day Marjorie's sister is being interviewed about the events that happened when she was a child, but you're also getting chapters of the documentary and the spin-off series that they formed through it, and also you're getting the perspective from Marjorie's sister when she was a little girl. And I feel like Paul Tremblay wrote really well from a child's perspective, and the ending is a huge twist in this book. It's really, really disturbing, and I would highly recommend this one. The next book that's red, because obviously I consider red a Halloween color because of blood, I want to recommend The Collective by Allison Galen. And this book, first of all, I feel like I haven't heard a ton of people talk about it. I don't know if I'm just missing where people are talking about it, but this is a really solid revenge thriller. So this is about a grieving mother and she's obsessed with finding the man who was responsible for murdering her daughter. Nothing ever happened to him and he's just walking around like nothing happened and it just makes her so, so infuriated and he's super privileged. And so she actually gets approached by this secret collective. So she ends up joining a secret group of women and they call themselves the collective. And they take it into their own hands to get justice against killers. And each of the members has an integral part in the killings. So this book is really fast paced. It really makes you think and I thought the twist was really good. Obviously any of the Halloween themed books I mentioned before also have Halloween covers. So many books have pumpkins on the cover and that would be perfect for this prompt. So the next prompt is read a book with a cover you love and for this I wanted to recommend some books that have covers that I'm obsessed with. And these are basically all of Grady Hendrix's books. <laughs> Obviously not all the ones he has written but all the ones I've read. I've read the Final Girls support group. I didn't like that one quite as much as I liked these. These are like all-time favorites. So so obviously the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, the cover is iconic. And then I feel like everyone's talking about this book now because of the film adaptation, but My Best Friend's Exorcism. This one is so, so good. This one is more of a book about friendship, but it does still have horrifying elements in it. So this takes place in the 80s and it's about two best friends and one of them seems to become possessed. And so the other friend is desperately trying to figure out what to do. And this one is such a fun time. The audiobook narrator is absolutely incredible for this one and it is hilarious per usual. Grady Hendrix has such a knack at being able to combine humor and making you laugh hysterically with also having really scary and also gory scenes in his work. And then Horror Store, which is so, so cool. It's designed like a catalog from Ikea. I'm trying to find a good picture. When you open it, you can see that it looks like an Ikea catalog. And at the beginning of each chapter, they have like descriptions of products. It's so cool. And if you've ever worked retail, you'll particularly appreciate this because there's so much commentary and humor involving working in retail. But this is basically about a sort of knockoff Ikea store and weird things start happening and three employees decide to stay overnight one night to see what the heck is going on when they're not there. So much happens in this book. There are some creepy elements. There's a lot of humor. And this is such a fun book also for me personally because when I was a kid, I always imagined what would it be like staying in like a retail store or a mall or a museum after it closes. And this was just a really fun experience to read about. Some YA books that I wanna recommend with stunning covers. The first one is None Shall Sleep by Ellie Marnie. And this one is so, so, good. Also, I feel like this one is sort of underrated. I would highly recommend this if you're a fan of The Silence of the Lambs and also Criminal Minds. So this is about two teenagers who have been recruited by the FBI and one of them is actually a final girl. And the FBI wants their help in tracking down juvenile serial killers. They're called in to give advice on an active case about a killer who exclusively kills teenagers. And they have to interact and interview a teenage serial killer who is extremely notorious, manipulative, and they have to kind of communicate with him to try to figure out the active case now. So this definitely gives me the Silence of the Lambs vibes. It was so intense throughout this book. 
really, really, really well done. And I just kept imagining the character who's in this book, his name's Simon, the serial killer that they interview. I kept imagining him as Hannibal Lecter, but that didn't take away from my enjoyment. And it definitely did something different than The Silence of the Lambs. It wasn't a direct copy. All of Tiffany D. Jackson's books have stunning covers, but I particularly want to recommend White Smoke. This is a haunted house story that she wrote. It also, of course, has social commentary in it that all her books have. And this is about Marigold. She's running from the phantoms of her past. She moves with her new blended family to this small town in Florida and she moves into this house and it just does not seem right. She suspects it's haunted, but lights start turning on and off, things start vanishing, and she also has a really creepy stepsister named Piper who basically says that there's a ghost there that doesn't want her there. I want to talk about a spooky middle grade book that has a beautiful cover, and it is Mine by Delilah S. Dawson. And this one, even though it's middle grade, does have some very creepy imagery in it and a wonderful setting. So this is about a young girl who has to move with her family to this Florida house really close to a swamp and throughout the book you don't know why she moved but you know there was an event that made them move so it has that mystery going on and she starts to suspect that it's haunted and paranormal activity starts to happen the next bonus prompt is read a horror book from an author you love and for this one I don't have any recommendations because it's personal to everyone and I haven't actually <laughs> decided yet what I'm personally even going to do for this prompt for the prompt for reading a novella I have a few recommendations for you so the first one is is the Bear Who Wouldn't Leave by J.H. Minecrief. This one is so spooky, it's very, very short, and this one is about a 10-year-old boy who is gifted this teddy bear from his stepfather who is horrible to him, and he keeps trying to get rid of this bear, but he cannot. This has some really, really creepy moments in it, Scary toys just really freak me out, and I thought that this novella was very, very well done and scary. Another really scary novella is The Patient by Jasper DeWitt. This one is really, really good and really freaky at the end, and it definitely has a psychological horror feel. It's about a patient in this mental institution, and basically no one can cure or help this patient. So there is this new psychologist, and he decides to start working with this patient. He's really cocky. He thinks, I mean, I'm qualified, I should be able to help this patient, but horrifying experiences start happening. And in the front, it says, the following manuscript was posted in several installments under the thread, Why I Almost Quit Medicine. So basically, it's told as if he's telling people in a thread online why he quit medicine, which I really liked that aspect of it. I thought it was cool and really made it feel more real and scary. I want to recommend The Seance in Apartment 10, and this is by Ambrose Ibsen. So this one is about a college student who's really sick of living in the dorms, so she decides to move into an apartment but the only one that she can afford is in this kind of not great part of town. It has a creepy vibe and she moves in and you know it's really small, it's junky, but she decides she's gonna make it work and she has her friends over one day and they all do a seance and after this happens things go terribly wrong and it is very clear that she's unsafe in her apartment and her life begins spiraling out of control. There are a few genuinely creepy scenes in this book and I would really recommend it if you want a shorter kind of supernatural paranormal book dealing with someone moving into this haunted apartment. The last novella I want to recommend is Petrified Women by Jeremy Ray and this one is about this girl who's in a relationship with her boyfriend who loves playing elaborate pranks on her and scaring her half to death. As soon as I heard that I was like I cannot even imagine being in a relationship like this because I would be so upset at the person but she's basically gotten used to it but one day she wants to scare her partner so so bad and she decides to do so but I don't want to say much. Basically things go terribly, terribly wrong. And this book where it starts is not where it ends. The ending is totally strange, but in a good way. And I would really recommend this book. It's very tense. The tension is done really, really well. The last bonus prompt is read a new to you author. So again, this is personal. I don't really have any recommendations for you all, but that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. It has been so fun already seeing how many people are participating in this readathon. It's so much fun. October is here. Happy October. Happy spookiest month of the year. Love it. If you are at this point of the video and are still here, please leave a jack-o-lantern emoji down in the comments. And I look forward to talking to you all in my next video.
Bye.